Hello everyone. In today's video, I'll be ranking all of the Yonko from weakest to strongest. This will include both the pre and post time skip Yonko, and I hope I'll be able to provide tons of information and scaling to help you all understand why I've placed them where I have. Please leave a like, subscribe, and comment if you're new and enjoy the video. And with all that being said, let's get into the rankings. Alright! Enough! Your sword's not working! Suffer the special muggy ball and blow off! Or maybe not. So at number 7, we have Buggy the Clown. And it shouldn't be any surprise as to why he's at the bottom of this list. But Buggy doesn't really do anything of note currently within the series, and he usually backs down and runs away from stronger opponents that he knows he can't beat. There is a statement, however, in One Piece Data Book Green that states that Buggy is definitely in the world's strongest class. You could argue this to just be satire if you don't believe this to be true, or if you do believe this to be true and actually want to take this statement seriously, this actually is supported and backed up by the fact that Buggy is a Yonko, with the Yonko being stated to be the world's four strongest pirates. So although Buggy is the lowest in this tier, he should be among the strongest, which says a lot about his strength. I hope you're ready for the consequences. Now, here comes Chop Chop! Festival! <laughs> And at number 6 we have Big Mom. Big Mom represents the standard that a Yonko should have in terms of both reputation and in power. Big Mom was also able to clash with and fight against base Kaido for 3 days straight, Base Kaido, who is stated to be the world's strongest creature, and both Big Mom and Kaido are stated to not be inferior to the Navy Admirals. Big Mom was also able to match hybrid Kaido on the rooftop in order to perform their dual attack called Conquest of the Sea, and later she was able to press both Awaken Law and Kid and tank many of their attacks until she was near death. Big Mom was also stated to be much faster in her homie form and to be using her full might against both Awaken Law and Kid utilizing all of her homies to their fullest extent. She also has all three types of hockey, and even has advanced armament hockey which is Duraneg. Big Mom also has her soul soul fruit, which she uses to steal the lifespan of others around her, though in order for this to be effective, the opponent has to be substantially weaker than Big Mom herself. She can also use her fruit to create homies that heal her injuries, so this coupled with her amazing strength and other abilities, make her a formidable opponent to go up against. However, the people above her can deal with her and her abilities with either little to no difficulty. I know you said, Mama, Mama. If that little punch is the best you've got, he'll make quick work of you, I'm afraid. And at number 5, I have Old Whitebeard. Many people might be confused as to why I have Old Whitebeard over Big Mom, especially because he's not in the post time skip, but I have reasons for that. Whitebeard during the pre time skip, while both on and off his medicine, was stated to be the world's strongest pirate. This was stated on numerous occasions by both data books and people within the manga. This is further supported by Whitebeard when he first arrived at Marineford and was also said to be the world's strongest pirate even while not on his medicine. With his devil fruit, the Gura Gura no Mi, being said to destroy the whole world and even tilt the planet with its sheer destructive power, Whitebeard was so strong that Mihawk himself admitted inferiority to Whitebeard, and Whitebeard, while stabilized on his medicine, was able to equally clash with Shanks and split the sky. Both Shanks and Mihawk are stronger than Big Mom during the pre and post time skip, not to mention that Big Mom herself implies that she thinks old Whitebeard was the strongest Yonko during the pre time skip. So this is definitive proof of Whitebeard being over Big Mom. And even if you say, well, that applies to the pre time skip but not post, the fact that Big Mom still thinks highly of him even two years later should probably show that at the very least, if he was still alive and on his medicine, he could still give her a run for her money. And we don't have any proof of her being stronger than him post time skip, since there wasn't ever any mention of that. 
So this is one of the reasons as to why I have Whitebeard above Big Mom. Another thing to note is that while Whitebeard was stabilizing his medicine, he was stated to be the closest pirate to Roger in terms of strength. And I hope you all don't doubt that Roger is stronger than Big Mom. Whitebeard was also able to clash equally with all three of the Navy Admirals during Marine Ford, and it was stated in a One Piece volume extra that the tide of the Marine Ford War didn't turn in the favor of the world government until Whitebeard's health started to decline, meaning before then he was stronger than all of the Navy's heavy hitters, which includes Old Garp, Sengoku, and all three of the Admirals. Whitebeard also has all three types of hockey and might even have advanced armament and conquerors, but we don't know for sure. Whitebeard was also stated to be the most feared pirate during the pre-time skip, and this adds on to everything else I've said previously. So with all this being said, I think this is a comfortable place to place old Whitebeard, being at number 5. One Piece wa... Oh, oh. And at number 4, I have the world's strongest creature, Kaido. Now, I've talked about Kaido in my Shanks vs. Kaido video, and I'll leave that down below in the description for you all to watch. And while compared to Shanks, he isn't that strong, in this video, I'm going over just him by himself within his own tier or within his own ranking, and he and his abilities are insanely powerful. Kaido was stated to be the world's strongest creature multiple times, and the reasons for this title is because of his unmatched vitality, his strength, endurance, and durability. Kaido was also so strong that he by himself was able to make people not even want to come to Wano and fight him just because of his sheer strength. This includes foes like other Yonko and even admirals who are strong in their own right. Kaido was even stated to rise to prominence and get his bounty to 4.6 billion berries from just his sheer power alone. Kaido in his base form was also able to battle against Big Mom for 3 days straight which I already stated is impressive because she is the baseline in terms of strength for Yonko. And although she's the weakest Yonko comparable to the others in strength, he is still a Yonko nonetheless. Kaido is also said to be the most likely to win against someone in a 1v1 fight, and this is supported a lot during Wano. And now that I've talked about base Kaido, I'll go over Dragon Kaido's feats. When it comes to Dragon Kaido, he was able to dodge an advanced armament hockey slash from Zoro's Enma, and although Zoro is weakened, he is substantially stronger than any previous version of himself and only gets stronger from this point on. And Zoro was even able to damage and wound Kaido, something that not many people can actually do to him. He was also able to beat up 4th gear Luffy, Kid, Law, and Zoro pretty consistently, even though they've all been getting stronger. And when Kaido awakens his double fruit, he's able to burn 5th gear Luffy, who is way stronger than any previous version of himself, and was also able to clash with 5th gear Luffy's God Pistol, which is his strongest attack. He was also able to almost overpower it and defeat Luffy. And for his hybrid form, he's implied that he was stronger than Big Mom after she got knocked off of Onigashima. Kaido is so strong that he can't be moved by Law's Room, and he knocked out Luffy multiple different times and even killed him in Wano before he awakened his 5th gear. Luffy was getting constantly stronger as well. And Kaido also has access to all three types of hockey, including advanced armament and advanced conquerors. And with all this being said, this is why I have Kaido at number four. <laughs> And at number 3 I have Luffy, and this should be pretty obvious because he surpassed Kaido when he unlocked Gear 5. This was supported in Road to Laugh Tale. In the same Road to Laugh Tale volume when it talks about Luffy's 5th gear, it says how the more he laughs the stronger he gets. And Gear 5 is called the peak of Luffy's power. Luffy overpowers and defeats both Hybrid and Awakened Kaido, and is in the same tier of power as Shanks and Blackbeard. And Mihawk, the world's strongest swordsman, tells Buggy and Crocodile that he doesn't want to start unnecessary conflict with Luffy, showing that he acknowledges how powerful he has become 
and Luffy has access to all three types of hockey, including advanced armament and advanced conquerors as well. This is why I have Luffy at the number three spot. And now for number two and one, I have Shanks and Blackbeard respectively, but I have them both as interchangeable because you can argue one or the other above each other. But I personally have Shanks at number two and Blackbeard at number one. Now, I know some of you Shanks fans might be you know, getting the pitchforks out and they're like, why do I have Shanks at number two? Let me explain. I'll start off with Shanks as number two first. To start off with Shanks, he is stated to be able to stand firm against Whitebeard while on his medicine. This is the same Whitebeard that was stated to be the world's strongest pirate. And Shanks is stated to have the strongest rivalry within the entire series, with his and Mihawk's rivalry being said to be above like other notable rivalries like Roger and Whitebeard or Roger and Garp, etc. And although Shanks lost his arm, he didn't get any weaker, and he even adapted to using one arm and got even stronger than he previously was. Shanks was also shown and stated to be able to block attacks from a Kainu, meaning that he could block and clash with the other admirals as well with minimal difficulty. Shanks was also able to battle against Shiki before he became a Yonko and was able to defeat him, and Shiki was relative to some extent and a rival for Roger. Not to mention that when Shanks was on his way to stop the Paramount War, it was stated in One Piece Data Book Blue that Shanks was unstoppable on his way to Marine Ford, and this means that Kaido, as strong as he was, just couldn't stop Shanks, and as we know, Shanks ended up showing up in the end anyway. He is also feared by the world government, and is still considered to be a rival for Mihawk, despite him having one arm. This is further confirmed by Marine saying that Shanks is Mihawk's number one de facto rival, and they also said that when Shanks showed up and blocked the Kainu's attack, he didn't show any fear in the face of a Kainu, meaning that he probably shouldn't have any fear against the other admirals as well. And Shanks' mere presence was able to end the Paramount War, which is a very impressive feat since everyone really wanted to keep fighting before he showed up. And in his fight with Kid, he was able to one-shot him with the Divine Departure, even though Kid and Law together were able to defeat Big Mom, who as I said before, is the baseline in terms of strength for Yonkos. And as I said before with Luffy, Mihawk states that he doesn't want to start unnecessary conflict with Shanks, showing that he acknowledges and knows how powerful that he is. Even Green Bull ran away from Shanks when he got hit with his Conqueror's Hockey and says how he's not ready to face Shanks and his crew yet. And not only does Kaido consider Shanks one of the very few people capable of fighting and defeating him in the battle, Shanks also has access to all three types of hockey, which includes advanced armament and advanced conquerors. I also consider Shanks above Luffy currently, since Shanks told Luffy to give him back his straw hat when he becomes a great pirate. And even after Luffy defeated Kaido, Shanks still didn't consider Luffy to be a great pirate, meaning that Shanks doesn't really seem to consider beating Kaido a great feat yet, or he could possibly be stronger than Luffy, and I'll just go with the interpretation of both. But I hope that none of you disagree with this. And now that I've gone over Shanks, it's time to go over the man himself, the new world's strongest pirate. Marshall D. Teach or Blackbeard. At number one, I have Blackbeard, and this is for various different reasons. To start, Blackbeard was stated multiple times to be the new world's strongest pirate after Whitebeard died. I'll show all the scans I can on screen for you so that you all can see that I'm not lying and this is stated a lot. He was also stated to have the strongest power which could arguably be the Yami Yami no Mi or the Gura Gura no Mi respectively. Blackbeard's Viva card itself actually questions if there's anyone that could actually defeat him in a battle which includes Shanks and is also said to reign over the new world with his strength and abilities as well. Blackbeard was also able to react to and tank attacks from many strong people like Whitebeard whose quakes were Duraneg and who was the world's strongest pirate, Sengoku who was the fleet admiral meaning he should be stronger than the navy admirals because navy rank correlates to strength, 
and he can also survive during neg attacks from Law, who, as I said, with the help of Kid, were able to damage and defeat Big Mom. Blackbeard was also able to defeat all of Whitebeard's pirates by himself during the Payback War, and Blackbeard is so powerful that the Marines aren't allowed to engage Blackbeard without permission, and the kind who thinks that interfering with his fight against Law isn't an option, and is forced to wait for orders or for the fight to conclude. And Blackbeard told Law to his face that he was ready and waiting to fight either Kid, Law, or Luffy, knowing that they defeated Big Mom and Kaido. And although Law got off screen, the narrator said that Law suffered a humiliating defeat by the hands of Blackbeard. And again, as I said previously, Mihawk acknowledges Blackbeard's strength and doesn't want to cause unnecessary conflict with him for no reason. Plus, he is so strong that the five elders believe that only the Beast Pirates, the Red Hair Pirates, or the Charlotte Pirates are the only ones capable of defeating him. And Blackbeard also has access to armament and observation hockey. Now, I know people might disagree with Blackbeard being the strongest because of him running away from certain individuals, but him running away from certain people isn't really necessarily him being weak. Blackbeard has always been very smart and had really good IQ. He knows when it's disadvantageous for him to battle someone if he doesn't have to, or if it'll cause too much harm to him or his crew, but that doesn't take away from the amazing feats that he has shown whenever he does decide to fight someone, and his strength is already known and feared by many people in the One Piece world. Anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed my Yanko rankings. If you have any thoughts or opinions, please comment down below, and don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and comment if you're new, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.